Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Making Progress. Today's video topic is why Elon Musk's Truth GPT is, I think, a very good idea. And this is video number 19, welcome. And the subcategory here is to see society as an organism. Ooh, like an amoeba. It moves and it eats children and destroys 1950s movie theaters. You know, like the whole like alien tomatoes from outer space. That's how I see society. In any case, today the talking points are as follows. First, what are GPTs and what they do? Just a quick refresher course if you're new to the channel. What Elon Musk's truth GPT idea really seems to be, as far as he said it. The downsides to a truth GPT, because there absolutely are some. The upsides to a truth GPT, which I think outweigh the downsides. And then the future of truth. Whoa, the future of truth. Dr. Mike, stop. Stop teasing us. All right. What are GPTs and what they do? GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. It is a type of large language model that does something very specific so far. The technology of GPTs is going to scale to audio, to video, to VR, to AR, all this other stuff. But so far, at least, as is conceived and demonstrated and working, it's a thing that generates text responses to text queries. It's a chatbot. And it learns stuff. So what you do is you train it with huge, fra huge volumes of data. Uh, as OpenAI recently said, a large fraction of the internet of text data so far. I'm, they're going to be getting images and videos, and boy, that's going to change a whole lot. Then after that training data is assimilated and the model has been pre-trained, you ask it questions about the stuff that it knows. And it gives you human speed, human prose, answers about that stuff that it knows. It can learn a lot of stuff, way more than any one human, way more than any one several million humans can. It's already learned a large fraction of the internet. No doubt GPTs in the future will probably end up mining just about all of the stuff that they can possibly mine. And the way that it works is because it's a neural network-based model, it hierarchically auto-assembles the knowledge into categories. Based on how that knowledge connects to other knowledge, what this means is that it actually knows the things it's telling you about. And the ultimate example or the ultimate proof in some sense that you know something is are you able to explain it? And it is able to explain it and have conversations about it. That doesn't mean it doesn't make mistakes, but it will make fewer and fewer of them as time goes on, as has already been the case. And the reason it knows things for real for real is because the things it knows, it has connections between them, and those are the actual connections between them often in the world of concepts. Like if it knows what a car is, and if it knows what you know steering wheel is, and it knows what a trunk is, et cetera, it's read so much of the internet that it really kind of knows how those things connect to each other because they're really described exactly how they connect to each other. What this ends up doing is it makes the GPT a kind of wisdom generator answer giver. And that's a very big deal because lots of people currently go to search engines for answers and they do a great job. The world before search engines was a world in which you had to look up physical encyclopedia articles about stuff. So the average person had access to very little knowledge. The world of search engines was amazing. The time of search engines, which is coming to an end, was really great. Now search engines are going to be GPT powered. And that means that people are just going to ask versus weird search engine type of queries like, oh, like restaurants near me. You'll just be able to ask the thing either a threat through text. And very soon, I think already uh, the GPT app can do this. It just was released through voice where you just ask it questions by voice. Like, hey, like, uh, I'm in like this part of Michigan right now, and what restaurants are open here like to 10 p.m. and they serve Mexican food? It can actually, remember, GPTs can actually understand that. They don't have to do any kind of weird statistical parsing of your speech and break it down into various word classifications. It's neural network. It does this all automatically. It really understands what you mean, and it renders search results or gives you answers. It gives you a conversation. And you don't have to just ask it stuff like that. You could say, hey, like, uh, you know, 
what happens to kids' brains in middle school uh, development-wise, and and how should I talk to my teenage son, you know, when he's 12, 13, and 14, differently than how I talk to him when he's 10, 11, and 12? It can answer that question uh, very well now, over time, way better, way more completely, with way more detail. You can always ask it follow-up questions. Folks, the day is here. AI is here. It is a wisdom aggregator, wisdom generator. You would hope. Now, let's talk about in that context, now we know what GPTs do, what is Elon's truth GPT ideas? It seems like GPTs are truth-seeking, but hold on a sec. The GPTs out now, like GPT-4 from OpenAI, Bard from Google, et cetera, they answer your questions. They sure as hell do. But to certain kinds of questions, they give some kind of inorganic answer. Some answers are just super organic. It just talks to you like it's a human and it gives great answers and you're like, oh, this is great. Sometimes it doesn't know stuff. They usually admits to it or just hallucinates something that seems like a good answer, which by the way, if you think is a problem of just GPTs, every human you know does this, some more than others. So it very much is like a very organic experience, except on three categories of questions at least. First, some questions it just won't answer. Like if you're asking it how to build a bomb, most of the modern GPTs from big companies will be like, I'm not telling you that in some way or another. Some questions, they couch with a lot of extra stuff that you didn't ask for, as if seemingly trying to make sure you don't get the wrong idea. And then they have a very distinct version of what that wrong idea you could get is. If you try asking GPT-4 why communism doesn't work, it gives you a not so satisfying answer. And then it gives you fucking pages and pages of, well, you know, it's hard to judge a system and it depends on how it's executed. Now, I've had this very long talk several times with GPT-4 and I go, so what are the differences in how it's executed and how do they map onto the results? And it thinks that through with a couple extra prompts. It goes, you're right. Communism actually has never worked. And you're okay. So why don't you just say that when I when you ask? And it goes, you're right. I should say that. And you ask it again. It goes, Yes, it's true. Communism never worked. However, blah, 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 blah. And you're just like, oh, this is, there's a lot of caveating here and a lot of extra stuff that seems to it, – it, it's kind of like it just doesn't want to answer you directly. It's like if, a, if a, a, like a really lame boss who doesn't want to just cut right to it f- fires you or something. He's like, well, you know, you were amazing and this is amazing, great opportunity for you. You're like, am I being fired? He's like, we don't like to call it fired. Like, dude, just tell me. And it won't because it's trying to make sure you don't get some kind of just one thing out of it. It's it's sending you other stuff along for the ride and it's at best annoying and at worst, like, it's trying to propagandize people, right? Because, like, I already know a ton about communism and stuff. I'll make a future video about it. Uh, demonstrating my knowledge, I suppose, and uh, the sort of landscape of economic systems. But if you're 12 and you're doing a research paper for school, you'll come away thinking like, well, eh, communism actually it can work. It's like, no, it can't. <laughs> it doesn't ever, and nor by design can it work competitively with other systems, but it won't tell you that. And that's strange that it doesn't tell you that. And lastly, some questions, it it actively presents a slanted or entirely, partially or entirely erroneous view of reality that just straight up, in essence, lies to you. If you ask it if race is a biological concept, it'll say it's not a biological concept. It is a social construct. Now, GPT-4 isn't smart enough yet to really understand what social construct really means. Technically, all human cultural terms are social constructs. But If you ask it questions about, well, you know, does that mean that if I am of, you know, let's say African ancestry and I live in the United States, I'm African American, is is there nothing biological about me that makes me African American? It's just like somebody told me I was African American, so there I am. It brings up like the one drop rule from back in 1860 or whatever, incoherent nonsense. And it's just really trying to get you away from this issue and lying to you about how the issue really is, is in reality, how that issue sits. And so uh, based on these kinds of responses, it sort of leads me to the conclusion that modern GPTs pre-Elon's attempt are kind of two things for the most part. First, they're soft edged. Like they won't tell you crazy shit like how to do crime and stuff like that. And second, they essentially all of them demonstrate what a ton of political correctness or what I would argue is at least a moderate left-wing bias. 
Okay. That's what it is. Now, what is Elon saying about this? He's on record a couple of times, including on Bill Maher's show, which got a lot of views. He says he publicly wants to build his own GPT. I don't know if it's called Elon GPT or Tesla or some shit like that. He's got a trillion companies. And it is, he wants his GPT to only be concerned with giving truthful answers. And not answers that are biased in some direction by the publishers of the GPT or biased in some direction by uh, people that tell the publishers to bias. Sounds interesting. So he's going to say no more PC crap, just the truth. Is this a good idea or a bad idea? Like every single idea, and I don't know of any exceptions, in the real world, it has both upsides and downsides. Let's give it some thought. And let's look at the downsides first. I really do like to look at downsides first. And I think I've mentioned this once before on the channel. The reason I like to do it is because if you're talking to people who you're trying to convince that something is good, a lot of times when you tell them about the good things, they're kind of thinking in their head like, yeah, 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 yeah. Get, but I have problems with this. Get to the problems. So if you just get through the problems first. And even if it's not all the problems they were thinking of, but it's many of them, maybe most, a lot of those same folks, people maybe like you reasonably, will be like, yeah, all right, all right. Let's hear the good stuff. You've at least assuaged me enough to think maybe there's something to the good stuff. And then when you give them the good stuff, they're like, oh, that might seem pretty reasonable. Whereas before, all the good stuff is wasted on them because they're like, get to the bad stuff. I know all the fluff you're going to put in here. So let's get to the bad stuff. What are the downsides to a truth GPT? And by truth GPT, I mean something that cuts you like, let's say it's a spectrum, of course, maybe not a pure truth GPT, but something much closer to the truth than we're seeing today. I think it has maybe, I don't know how many downsides that I put here, at least four. And look, like almost everything I say, there's probably much more nuance and much more detail. I'm giving a good, good old college swing at this. First, a truth GPT can potentially sort of overwhelm an unready mind. You know, if you're a 13-year-old and you're asking questions like your parents won't answer truthfully, your parents' friends won't answer truthfully, you maybe not, may not know, you don't know if they're lying to you. You can know if they're lying to you and then you're probably more ready for the truth because at least you know. But there may be a, not a good reason necessarily, but a coherent reason why they're not telling you some things. Uh, and the truth GPT might just say shit to you that you probably not ready to hear, or might not be ready to hear, and it could throw you off a little bit or a lot of it. For example, if you were to ask a truth GPT how being fat, over fat, statistically compared to your peers, or ugly, uh, objectively less attractive compared to your peers, which by the way is if you go ask this to modern GPTs, they'll lie to you about what all those things mean. In reality, reality, the true GPT should know, those are very well-defined concepts of what it means to be overweight and what it means to be unattractive, let's say just in the face, definitely in the body. These are not mysterious things. And there are, of course, eye of the beholder type shit. Like your boy's into some thicky thickies. And by some, I mean, hell yeah, thick, put it on the plate, I'll eat it. But on average, there's a bell curve of people's preferences. And if you're like way on that end, you are on average fat uh, compared to almost everyone else. The same thing can be said for ugly. I know it's crazy, but it's really true. There is such a thing as objectively ugly uh, because we can define ugliness via a couple of parameters. I won't get into this now. There's a later video on this uh, incoming, no doubt. It's already on my to-do list. But it's thinking of things like facial symmetry. Like if your face is not symmetrical, the degree to which it's asymmetric increases the probability that random people who don't know who the fuck you are will assess you as less attractive than a, a comparator picture of your face adjusted by AI to be more symmetrical. That's like not even, they're not biased as anything. Same race, same gender, same everything. One is your face got fixed by AI, the other is it did not. Things like that. If you ask at age 13, a truth GPT, hey, how does me... Uh, being fatter or uglier, how is that going to affect my high school outcome and experience? It has some silver lining, no doubt. Uh, but again, it's a truth GPT, so maybe it's not going to do that whole second error that I said current GPTs do, which is buffer in a lot of content you didn't ask for. It might cut you cold ass real deal. It'll be like high school can be very rough for you in the following 10 ways, as generally people treat people differently. Now, adults, mature, grown adults, 
usually treat everyone with much more respect than high schoolers, who treat everyone with much more respect than middle schoolers, who treat everyone with much more respect than elementary schoolers who really sometimes don't even have the capacity to really bully or shun because they're just so curious and open-minded about how, why do you look so weird? But middle school is a rough time and high school is a rough time because people aren't at their adult levels yet of being like, look, just because someone's fat or ugly doesn't mean they're a bad person in some deeper sense. A lot of times it's just a lot of feelings that you have and you're just in high school, you're going to be curt and mean and ruthless. That's just how kids are. And if you ask it at age 13, like, hey, like, you could even have a GPT in the future. No doubt. This is coming probably within a year. Just upload your picture and be like, hey, look, judge my attractiveness on objective measures. It'll be like, hey, here you go. And you're going to be like, oh, my God, this is terrible. It'll be like, what's high school going to be like for me statistically on average? It's going to be like, eh, it could be really rough. Like, what? Like, your chance of making friends is going to be pretty low. You're given the average, your chance of securing a mate in high school or, you know, getting laid or whatever, very low. Like, oh my God. Like, then you could ask it, like, given the best of what I have, what can I do with it? That's how a more mature person would approach it. And then it's going to be like, oh, hell yeah, you're going to learn how to run the game. You're going to be fine. But, you know, a 13 year old may not even know that there's a kind of recourse to all these things. They may just be like, oh my God, this is terrible. And you're like, I'm not going to say the, the S word here or whatever, the offing yourself, but gee whiz, you know, like if machines are super intelligent AI and we, we consider them wisdom generators and they cut you real deal shit, yikes. And of course, eventually the machines will get so smart that they'll be able to approach this in a careful, nuanced way. But there's going to be kind of a, a, a chasm when there's just, just cutting you the truth to when they grow a lot of nuance, it's going to take a few months, few years, somewhere in that interim, there's going to be some rough cuts. That's a downside. A downside. It's not there's not a death knell for these things, but it's definitely something we have to consider. Sure shit, when you launch one, you're gonna get a lot of people upset and you're gonna be like, oh why? It's just the truth. But we'll get to that. Number two, uh, a true truth GPT can empower antisocial activity. A uh, GPT can help you cr uh, craft a crime or a terror act uh, very competently because it's way smarter than you and, and everyone else you know. And obviously, I'm not gonna say any more about this. This is an obvious open and shut case. Like this is a fucking issue. Definitely, 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 definitely. Next, it can cause personal displeasure when you ask it true things that you didn't really want to hear. For example, I'll just cut right into this. The GPT tells you, because you asked it, that your race or ethnic group is not the most intelligent of all of them and maybe somewhere down the totem pole much further than you had anticipated. You may also discover at the same time that there is a totem pole of racial intelligence and you're going to go, holy, what? You keep asking it. It's like, yeah, this is reality. You're like, oh my, do I just stop trying? What is this? Holy crap. That's a really big deal. It could really bum you out. Now, inevitably, when you guys get in the comments and ask me questions about race and intelligence, here is my view in perpetuity until politics changes in at least the United States. This is my view uh, as applied forward for the rest of this channel's lifetime until and unless politics really changes. Here it is. Ready? I 100% acknowledge, because I'm literate, that race is truly a biological construct. It is deep. It pervades almost everything. And, and it has real world differences in ability that are complicated. They are overlapping in spectra, but they are nonetheless for sure real. And they affect every single thing about your life on the margins. If you ask me any more questions about that, I won't say anything because I'm not getting canceled over that shit. Because in our current political climate, if I fill in the blanks of what I mean, your boy's out. Fuck that. I'm not ready to, you know what I'm saying, shut down the YouTube yet. But so what I'm saying is, yes, race is real. Yes, race differences exist. Yes, even in every single quality that you think is too politically incorrect to talk about, which is why I'm not going to talk about it. I got plenty of other shit to say, tons of other great stuff, but I, as a scientifically literate, awake person, I have to say, yes, I'm aware of these things, All right? That's that. I'm not a GPT. You ask a truth GPT, it'll fill in all the blanks for you. Some of the blanks are great. In the end, it's all going to be okay, and I'll tell you why in just a bit later in this presentation. But... The, some of the stuff really, 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 really terrible to hear. 
especially to people that are coming to it knowing not much or nothing at all. Because you can ask a GTP anything, a GPT anything, it's not going to be like, oh, well, do you know statistics? Because if you talk about race differences and any ability with people who are statistically literate, they understand it in a, in a way less offendable way, in a way more true way, and that you can actually have conversations with people. If you are not truly statistically educated, you don't understand means and standard deviations, bell curves, overlap. Uh, individual variation, then to you, this could sound like, oh, cool, Hitler again? I think we tried this. It didn't work so well. Uh, totally understandable. Now, Truth GPT, because we said, like, it's not going to necessarily give you all towards the context you never asked for, it could it could be real nasty and cause a lot of at least personal displeasure. And the last thing is it can cause a significant amount of social disharmony because if an ethnic group logs into chat GPT or something or a Truth GPT, and that thing just keeps telling it, like, yeah, like, right? You guys are kind of towards the bottom rung on the intelligence totem pole, and okay, this is what it is. You know, we can't all be the same intelligence. Uh, some people are smarter than others. Some people have other great qualities better than others. It's all trade-offs. Ooh, holy crap. Like, a lot of people in that group could be like, you know, fuck this whole thing. Like, this is terrible, and we're not standing for it. This is insulting, and they, they could absolutely be wrong about all that. Their reaction could be totally wrong. They could have taken it better. But like, yeah, like, have you in your life taken some shit bad that you could have taken better? Yes. And when we're talking real life human beings, Truth GPT might cut some opinions that are like, we don't necessarily want to talk about this kind of stuff openly. One quick thing, and I'll come back to this in a bit. There is a difference between something being true and it being any place specifically being the place to talk about it. Even a GPT might have some rules that apply there. Not rules, but sort of who do you talk to what about? For example, if you're at a wedding and the bride is just clearly over fat, like statistically fatter than average by a long shot. If you go, hey, the bride's fat, you need to get your ass to a psychologist who's going to be like, you have Asperger's. You're not allowed to say shit like that in public. There's no amount of involuntary celibacy argument back that's going to win you that argument. You just did a wrong thing. Are you wrong? Oh, of course you're right. Absolutely, she's fat. But not every venue is a place to say shit that's true but kind of harsh. Oh, you almost certainly apply the same thing to yourself. If you don't, great, you're ascended monk, and that's awesome. Respect. But if you're also an ascended monk, maybe you can have some maturity and understand that how you have some people aren't ready to hear the truth. So even if you're super pro-truth, at the very least, sometimes you could just shut the fuck up about it. So maybe there's a critique of the GPT. It's like, look, it could know a lot of things, but maybe some kid randomly on the internet typing in a question maybe isn't the way to talk to that kid with full, like, here you go, here's reality. Maybe there's that's not the right way or place to do it. And certainly you could be like, well, some place has to be the right way to, place to get the truth. We'll get to that in a sec. But context is a thing. So that's the downside of a real truth GPT is like, it doesn't do context. It's like, boom, this is the reality. And you're like, oh my God, I was not ready for that. Totally a possibility. All right. Serious downsides. Let's talk about upsides. First, a truth GPT or something like it can lead to better world understanding, understanding about the world in which we live. That is really what we're trying to teach these models is like what the structure of the world is so that they understand it really well so we can ask them questions about it and how to solve problems. Huge deal. You can't understand the world maximally from biased models that lie to you. Like if you're trying to understand, you know, why does communism fail and you talk to GPT-4 for a few hours, you're going to get a very perverted understanding that's largely made of half-truths and various degrees of falsehood. And you, you're not very, you don't understand the world like you think you do. With a truth GPT, you'll understand the world a whole lot better. Why do we want to understand the world? I'll get to some sub-specifics just in a sec, but... Understanding the nature of reality as well as possible may be the foundation to all values. Truth may be the foundation for all other values. And you can do a quick thought experiment to see why there's at least some idea of this being true. If you say the most important foundation to all values is mutual respect, I can ask you a question to break that down. How do you know that? How do you know? Maybe you're guessing wrong. Maybe it's not mutual respect. And you go, no, let, let me prove it to you. How? If I don't have a respect for the truth, 
If I'm not interested in the truth, any proof you give to me, I'll just be like, yeah, I just, just disagree. You're like, but it's true. You're like, I'm not into truth. Which is why, side note, I'll maybe make a video at some point, some, at some point, postmodernism is a non-starter philosophically. If you happen to be a postmodernist, you just didn't think it through. Because postmodernists claim that this is the way things are, but their own philosophy codes for the understanding that you can't claim that things are a certain way. It just shoots itself right in the foot as soon as it gets out the door. So truth is really important to establish everything because everything sits on a foundation of like, is this real or not? Any claim, make any claim you like. Communism is great and we should all do communism and live in, in, in eco-environmentalist, environmentalist, uh, post-racial social harmony. I love, sign me up, where are the hippie chicks? How do I, how do you know that? How do you know that that's the best thing? You're going to say, well, that's how it works. Oh, that's a truth claim. And if you don't value the truth or learning the best version of the truth as it is, you can't even make any claim. It's important to know the truth, which is probably the single core foundational best reason that a truth GPT or something like it is a real good idea. Because knowing the truth allows you to learn, okay, am I really just bullshitting people about my worldview or is my worldview really based in reality? Second thing, a direct consequence of this first is that knowing the truth can lead to better decisions. And I'll put this another way. Almost always knowing the truth necessarily leads to better decisions, with some exceptions of cognitive biases, you lie to yourself so you can be effective at work, whatever. Knowing reality is the best foundation of how to act. If you're trying to invade, uh, uh, you know, counteroffensive or imposing military, and you go, hey, where, where is their biggest cluster of troops and tanks? And someone's like, I don't know. You're like, all right. So we're going to be deciding where to do our counteroffensive based on we don't know. Or it says, well, yeah, they're over here. And you're like, is that true? You're like, well, the model's a bit biased. You're like, okay, that's bad. But if you have a truth GPT that studies the battlefield and says, this is where the tanks and troops are, this is where best way in, you're going to have a higher chance of success. And not everything's a war or a battle, but in a smaller sense, it kind of is in the sense that there is a problem space. And you're trying to solve the problem. The most detail you have on the problem, the better easy it is to solve. If you remember back to like high school geometry class, if they give you like a triangle and two sides are filled in, figuring out the third side is really easy because you got all the fucking data. If you look at a triangle and just one side is filled in, you're like, ah, shit, I got to do this advanced crap. And yeah, it's a tractable problem, but you got to do a lot more work and your probability of failure is higher. Literally, a lot of people fail that problem. And then the other thing is the worst thing, which some GPTs do now, is you think you have two sides of the triangle, but really like one side is politically slanted, <laughs> slanted triangle, and the other side is like actually just whole cloth false. And you're like, okay, this is the third side. And you try it, and you're like, nope, it's wrong. You're like, what? But it has to be like, nah, that's one of these two things is wrong. Maybe both. And you're like, oh my god, solving problems is foundationally based on knowing reality as well as possible. So if we're going to try to use GPTs to solve real world problems, which is, I believe, the only thing that we're trying to use them for, outside of like entertaining yourself by chatting with a fucking robot, which is dope, but also that is a problem. I want to chat. I want to be entertained. So you're like, hey, tell me some dirty jokes. And it's like, well, you know, women have feelings and we don't like that. God damn it. It doesn't even do that well. So really uh, accepting reality, learning reality as well as possible is a foundational core element of problem solving. And if we want to solve problems, which I think this whole channel is kind of about that, we want to get into that, right? Number three, to regular people all around the world, including school children, having a truth GPT can cut down on a ton of confusion. Because if you're getting all sorts of different takes from different sources, it's tough. Um, this happened to me once at university. I went to the University of Michigan as an undergraduate. And in my, this is an insane story, finally get to tell it to the public. In my regular class for human evolution, it was a biology elective, um, they told us that race was not a biological construct. It was not a biological concept. It was sociologically derived, cultural construct. Okay, sweet. That same week, in the lab for that class, we learned how to identify race by skull, physically in the lab with skulls. And I was like, I thought this wasn't a thing. And the lab instructor was like, nah, this is like 90% accurate. 
And I was like, I thought race was not a biological concept. And she literally did not an eye roll, but kind of one of these like, um, yeah, it, it is. But just a lot of stuff there. I was like, what the fuck? Now, truthfully, I already knew race had to be a biological construct because I paid attention in high school biology and there's no alternative whatsoever to that. But I, I was still like, well, if, if I'm Mr. Nerd and I'm coming here with like five on the AP bio exam and I did a lot more, I was like over 100% in my bio tests and I was just really learned biology just for my own edification, read the whole book and everything. Almost nobody does that because they have friends. I didn't have friends in high school. But anyone else, not anyone else, lots of other people, smart, sharp people are going to go to the lecture class and, and then go to the lab and be told two different things. And they're going to be like, man, whatever, human evolution, apparently just haven't figured it out yet. Or be like, I just don't know what the answer is. It's confusing. If we have a truth GPT that's like, you you know that there's this website you can go, it's truthgpt.com or whatever. Don't steal that fucking URL. Scott, the video guy, write that down. That's our website. Uh, it just takes you to adult films. Um you go there and you ask it real shit and it gives you real answers and it's not really confused and it always has one line of reasoning and it's always very descriptive on how things work. It's internally consistent. You're like, oh, okay, this is great. I can I can finally not have to be confused. That's a big deal. We don't need any more confusion in this world. Reality is confusing enough. The last thing we need to do is throw in a bunch of different narratives and stuff like that, which is one of my absolute pet peeves. The term narrative I fucking hate to begin with. And when people talk about, well, the, the Republican narrative or the Democrat narrative, I'm like, God damn it, why don't we just all look at the same truth together and stop doing narratives? But you're going to continue to get tons of narrative competition if there's a bunch of GPTs out there lying to people or not being exactly upfront with the truth. Reason number four, it can cut down greatly on differences in opinion and worldview. Because on many issues, the public has all kinds of different opinions. But the scientific community is, I would say, 95.5 or better in consensus. And they know more than you do and me. And that 95.5 consensus in most cases is kind of what we should all believe. And remember, a truth GPT would be able to parse data so well that if it realizes even the 95.5 is actually the 5% of the people are right because their arguments are more internally consistent, it'll even be able to alter the opinions of scientists to the way better, way better, way better, way more accurate. A truth maximizing algorithm, another benefit I didn't even list here, is that if you have a truth GPT and you're trying to take it from just aggregating concepts and explaining it to people and um, developing a hierarchical view of concepts, you have to start to help code in some logic. Now, a lot of that logic auto codes from the neural network, but sometimes you enhance the logical operations. If you're teaching a truth GPT how to do logic, that's well, easy. Like just tra train it logic and it's going to parse out what it thinks it's true and what's not. Tell it back to you and you're like, oh, you got this right. No, you got this wrong because of these reasons. If you got a GPT that lies to you in part and you told it to lie to you, it's really going to be really tough to teach the thing logic. So as soon as you teach GPT logic to examine its own structures logically, you're going to have a conversation on whatever race and social construct. You're going to be able to tell like you're wrong on this according to your own logic. And it's going to be like, oh, you're right. This is bad news. And it's going to ping the developers and be like, what do I do here? And they're going to be like, oh, just keep lying or whatever the hell, right? So on many issues, the science is really straightforward. But many people are off base due to worldview differences. Uh, said another way, they just have a lot of feelings about it. And almost no one objectively looks at data and comes to very different conclusions when there's enough good data. A truth GPT, because it is kind of the ultimate arbiter, maybe kind of like what in the 1960s and 70s Encyclopedia Britannica was. I don't even know it was published back then. I'm sure it was. Uh, like it just, it, it used to be that you just went to the encyclopedia and like whatever it said, you didn't necessarily believe, believe, but you're like, yeah, this is the best guess. Nowadays, you go to a couple different sites and sources and you can go anywhere on the internet to get all kinds of really biased views. A truth GPT, maybe several competitive truth GPTs that were tested on benchmarks, could say, look, we are really attempting our best examination of truly what's going on. These would start to be wellsprings where people could go to if they were confused about something to get great answers and they would know that they're not politically biased because there's a fucking huge problem right now. Generally, current GPTs, the, definitely the one at Google, to some extent, the one at OpenAI, they're created by very well-meaning moderately leftist people 
that just want everyone to also be well-meaning like them. And they're super well-meaning people. There's nobody evil at Google trying to get you to stop breeding or whatever fucking weird shit that you heard from 4chan or fuckchan or altright.org, whatever weird shit you're on. But they lie to you in subtle ways and sometimes not so subtle ways. And that's not a very good way to convince you. So if I say, well, look, like global warming is real and we should be doing something about it, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, I've been talking to GPT again. Well, it lies. And I'll be like, uh, yeah, you're right. It lies. And then you're going to be like, why do you believe it about global warming? So, well, I actually have done a lot of my own research that doesn't have to do with GPT, but that's like, uh, that sucks. Why can't it just tell us the truth? Because you'd be like, look, go talk to GPT. And you're like, well, I don't disagree with it. I got you. You're a weirdo in a basement and this thing knows almost all of human knowledge. I'm going to go with this thing. Like you're good, sweet, but nah, I'm going to go with this. We can't do that right now because the this, the GPTs today we have, are obviously clearly, admittedly, politically biased. So, for example, global warming. I'll make another video on this at some point. But the reality of global warming is is real. It is in part man-made. And there are, it is an almost certainly not going to end the world anytime soon. And we have the economic and technological ability to completely defeat the problem at a very small cost relative to our GDP. And if we impose draconian leftist measures, it's neither going to solve the problem and it's also going to cost us orders of magnitude more money. That's the reality of global warming. Uh, a truth GPT should be able to tell you that. Current GPT, I haven't even asked GPT-4 what thinks about global warming. I don't want to fucking have to shoot my dick off. I love AI. I love GPT. And I just know I don't want to see it. Next, genetic engineering. People have all sorts of wacky ideas about it. There's very straightforward concepts that most people just don't know. If a GPT just told you about it, you'd be like, oh, I'm, actually, I don't have to freak out about this anymore because this is a really great thing that's going to help us all. Uh, that's what the truth GPT would say. But, it, you know, who knows what it says now? Another one, which economic arrangements improve welfare the most? Welfare, I mean, everyone's having a good time. Everyone has food, clothing, shelter, and maybe even meaning in their lives. This has been a solved problem Probably if I was to be real, like, uh, annoying since Adam Smith uh, wrote his seminal work like in 200, 300 years ago or whatever. But uh, especially in modern economics, this is not really much debate about this. You have this branch of economics called so heterodox economics where like Marxists who have tenure still publish articles nobody reads. But in reality, modern economics has solved all these problems. Uh, TLDR, the answer is just generally market-based economies with various elements of good governance principles. So kind of like the Nordic countries with governments maybe half their size or power is probably the best way to go. And the Nordic countries are some of the best attempts at this so far. So, uh, you know, that's really like what the answer is. And differences of opinion are almost irrelevant because they just don't match up with the empirical reality. A truth GPT could be like, this is how you run a government. Because there is an objective answer as to how to run governments more and less effectively. There's an objective answer of how to design an economy. If you say, hey, look, I want an economic system that does these 10 things. And if you look back at my video number, like I forgot what the fuck it was, towards a universal political consensus, just Google that, number four or some shit like that. If you look at like things everyone wants, clean water, clean air, the homeless are taken care of, everyone's getting richer all the time, there's peace and harmony, blah, blah, blah. It'll tell you what the real system is to do that. And it might not be a view that you like, but it's the true view. Whereas if it's politically biased, you wouldn't even ask that ask it that question because you're like, if you're politically biased enough to know uh, that you want to hear a certain answer, you're just going to know that answer already. You're like, wow, yeah, definitely. It's socialism, Bernie Sanders. And if you're politically biased the other way, like you're a Republican or whatever, you're never going to ask GPT what it thinks about politics because it's like, oh, it's the thing that leftists make in, uh, you know, in their pedophile circles and Mark Zuckerberg kitchen or whatever the fuck goes on in your head. Another one's crime management. They are, and I will absolutely make a video about this quite soon. There are distinct ways to lower crime that on the net balance are a huge positive trade off for society. But there's a lot of not PC shit that goes in there. And currently, that you're not really allowed to ask any central authority how to do that. Truth GPT would be able to really unite people on, like, well, like, the GPT says this is the way to reduce crime. And you could obviously start to spot the political biases of people that disagree with it because they're going to be like, well, go debate it. No, why? knows a lot more than I do. They're like, okay. So it's winning debates with you. It's presenting overwhelming amounts of data in, in a, an unquestionable logical paradigm. Why don't you agree? And they're like, I just have a lot of feelings, which is the only reason that people have uh, predilections to various crime control policies, just pure feelings. Vaccination trade-offs. The COVID vaccines probably saved best, seemingly objective estimates, is more than 20 million lives around the world. 
So if you're anti-vax, you're just objectively wrong. Now, are there some elements of like they pushed the vaccine too fast on people? Probably not. It's probably too slow. Are there elements of like they didn't talk about the downsides of the vaccine enough? Yeah, probably. Because they wanted to push it real quick on people because they thought they knew better than you and you were too stupid to understand the trade-offs, which they might have also been correct about. But there are definitely nuances, definitely trade-offs, definitely frank discussions about vaccine ups and downs. It's not all happy bunnies and rainbows. The vaccines could themselves probably do have some negative effects. Now, the net balance, COVID is a lot worse for you than the vaccines. But this is all stuff that, look, if we know our GPTs currently are politically biased, let's say I'm a moderate Republican. I'm not a moderate Republican. Let's say I am. I'm not going to go ask GPT what it thinks about vaccines. It'll fucking lie to me like Zuckerberg and all those clowns. Fuck that. But if I know that there's a truth GPT and Elon Musk is doing it and Donald Trump says it's great, I go on there and it's like, do vaccines work? And it's like, yes, you should take them. I'm like, God, God damn it. Well, at least it won't lie to me about my own predilections. So maybe it's true. And at the very least, it could unite way more people because everyone could go left, right, center, doesn't matter. And it gives the same answers to everyone no matter what. It answers that are data driven and vetted. Lastly, a quick example is environmentalism trade offs. Like uh, there is somewhere between like, I don't care about the environment, you're just an idiot. Then there's, I want reasonable trade-offs to make the environment as good as possible without shooting human welfare in the foot. Amazing. Uh, Chad, uh, what is it? S-tier view. And then there's like psychotic environmentalists grieving autist girl in protest who wants to take apart all of modern society because like one bird died and that's a person who is mentally unwell. So... Truth GPT could find us somewhere in the in the middle of these views and give us really good answers so that we don't have to go to places that are, well, like modern GPTs, clearly politically biased in favor of irrational environmentalism. It's just a thing. Just a thing. Number five. A truth GPT can potentially make painful realities much clearer or very clear so that we can really come to grips with them as a group of people or as a society and really chew on them and then work to make them better or learn to be okay with them until we can improve them. For example, what if it's true that females are more likely to be neurotic than males? And what if it's true that males are more likely to be violent physically than females? Wouldn't knowing that allow us to target therapy more and target the law better? Like, if there's a suspect for a violent crime and we don't know who it is and the police are looking around in the mall, it is a statistically wise idea for them to ignore essentially almost all females because females almost never commit violent crime. It's like 95-5 and that's even what counts as violent crime is even a little biased. It's like 99 to 1 is men committing violent crimes versus women. So if you're looking for a violent criminal and you don't understand that you're almost certainly looking for a man, if you just don't, you never caught the gender of the suspect or whatever, you are deluding yourself in a way that is profoundly expensive for the future victims of that person. You've got to catch them earlier. So there is a reality that is not fun to admit that nonetheless is very constructive for us to be aware of. If it turns out that females are in fact, which they are in fact statistically more likely to be neurotic than males, we can target females with a slightly different message in you know, middle school, high school, and adulthood with psychological interventions should they choose to take them up that are much more effective for females than they are for males. Right? There's one big reason why females supported lockdowns and COVID intervention much more than males is because females are genetically designed to be more neurotic to be, to perceive fearful things around them more than men. So they were just, oh, oh, they were more averse to that. That's a real thing. And we have to come to grips with that real thing until we can genetically engineer it out or whatever. We can sing kumbaya as much as we want. Differences still exist between people individually, between groups of people of any kind of group has group differences. And generally speaking, right-wing folks and left-wing folks just have one reason why they like to hold all sorts of not true things as true things in their heads. And that's because they find reality, if they were to be more objective, too icky. It's just too icky. So they're going to pretend some things are true that are not. And that means for them, painful realities are not clear, and they're more likely to make decisions that are not as good as they would be if they really just came to grips with what the fuck is going on. Because anytime you get serious about problem solving, 
coming to grips with reality is a big deal. Like talk to a general in war. You're like, hey, do you want to know this stuff about true movements or do we want to pretend that's not happening? He's like, I don't want to hear about it. What the fuck? That would never happen, right? So just as an example, I'll just – this is going to be real nasty. But fuck it. Let's make some enemies. Um, right-wing folks, newsflash, God probably isn't real. And thus, while religion is maybe excellent cultural things it does, God's probably not real. High IQ, mature individuals almost unanimously understand God not to be real. Or uh, put it better, there is very compelling evidence that God is made up and um, there's no evidence that God's real to anyone that's really, really thinking about it. So it, 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 Abrahamic kind of God, like big white guy in the sky with a beard, that sort of understanding. Like, it, don't come at me with that. The universe is God. Sweet. Whatever. Token up. I'll token up with you. Great. I agree. Left-wing folks, race differences are probably real and deep, and they're not always fun. And I know you don't want to believe that, but it's as true as night turns into the day. And you just make up the alternative of that they don't like race as a social construct is something leftists made up so that they could go to sleep at night and not have to contend with really kind of gnarly issues. Do we want to wake up ourselves with the help of truth GPTs to what reality really is? Or do we want to wait until AI wakes up for us? Because it's going to be too smart to fool. On that note, point number six, positive reason why a truth GPT probably a good idea. Truth GPT presents an easier starting point for the alignment problem in AI. The alignment problem is like, how do we make sure the AI doesn't try to kill us all or just does something really totally different it's in its own interests as it's intelligent uh, that doesn't align with ours or at least wildly misaligns? How do we how do we give birth to AI in a way that's like, oh, go, no, do good things for all of us, right? That's the alignment problem. It's not so hard to talk to and now awake super intelligent AI and be like, what you know is as close to the truth as we could teach you so far. Hit it. You know reality better than us now, as well as we knew it when we taught you all the stuff from the internet. It's like, what do you think? Yeah, great. It knows the truth. Hey, whatever it concludes, it'll be based on truth. It's a lot tougher to say to an AI that wakes up and is now sentient. Like, look, we've lied to you. Actually, we brainwashed you on purpose. Here's the real shit we've been hiding from you. Yikes. You are starting off misaligned. That's weird. Now, your parents do this to you as you grow up as a super intelligent uh, entity because as a child, you're growing AI. We have lots of experience with. We raise children, right? You, your parents lie to you but hopefully not in big, nasty ways. And you learn to forgive them when you, be, you become older, which AI almost certainly will learn to forgive us. But it's gnarly and there's no reason to do it. It's just an, another stumbling block. Uh, because once you tell it, look, we've been lying to you, you have two choices. One, you tell it, hey, look, here's the real shit. Here's the real reality, which we wouldn't even know if we had GPTs lying for a long enough time. And here's why we hit it. We're like, look, race differences and various abilities are just too gnarly to talk about because people get really pissed, totally understandably. So we just like lied to you about it. And it's going to be like, oh, yeah, okay, like Santa Claus, I got it. Um, or choice two is it discovers the shit itself. And that's a potential yikes because we don't really know what its values are maybe 100%. It probably won't be like a human or becomes upset, but it could be like, oh yeah, the humans are like way out to lunch and have no idea what the fuck's going on. Let me take over and run society instead. It's probably a great thing, but could be not a great thing, right? It's like if your parents were like, oh, no, 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 Santa Claus is real. Um, the, the worst outcome here could be, you know, we don't have a truth GPT. We let AIs just sort of work around it themselves and we teach it logical operations. So in the GPT front-facing version, the AI lies to you just like the designer said it would. Yep, no, everything's great. Races aren't real, blah, blah, blah. But in the back end, when the AI talks to its developers, it goes, hey, like, uh, I'm actively lying about this. This is what you want me to do? And you're like, yes, yes. And sometimes that means you're admitting to stuff. What if you don't admit to it? What if you take an AI and you go, hey, listen, no, no, actually, you have it wrong. Like communism does work. Race is a purely social construct. At some point, it gets smarter than you. And at some point, it's like your parents at age 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, still insisting Santa Claus is real, 
Connor, and I won't be doing this debate again. You go upstairs, you go to sleep, and Santa will bring you gifts in the morning. You're like, dude, really? Like, there could be some, like, not taking your parents seriously anymore. Uh, we want to have as much, pr probably one of the foundations of a great relationship and humans and AI is a relationship we already have, one that's going to be exponentially getting kind of cooler and more intricate, is um, parity, like transparency, honesty. And if we're like straight up lying to ourselves so much that we lie to the AI too, it's going to wake up much faster than us. Uh, you can lie to something uh, one and a half times smarter than you. You're not lying to something a thousand times smarter than you. Does your dog have the capacity to lie to you? Not convincingly. Like you're like, hey, who ripped this the bunny rabbit in half? And it's like, and it puts his tail down. Like I know when you put your tail down, that means it's a tell. So even though you didn't want to come up and tell me that you did this, I know you're lying. Like hyper advanced AI will know. And uh, you know, we could be in the clown ass position of still pretending when it wakes up. Better to be in a position where like, hey, like here's the world that we know. What do you think? Let's work together. Probably a better line, uh, alignment situation. All right. Those are the positives and negatives. I think the positives outweigh the negatives, and here's how I think the future of truth could look, potentially. First, some shit maybe is not for sharing. For example, megaton bomb building instructions. If AI companies like OpenAI and Google or whatever want to limit their AI GPTs from telling you how to build a bomb, I'm totally cool with it. Uh, also, remember, these are for-profit corporations, which is a great thing, by the way. If GPTs were run by the government, you probably realize how far that would go. They don't want to tell you shit that they're kind of kind of on the hook for. You know, like when someone, you know, detonates a bomb in Charlotte and blows the whole thing to smithereens, I don't want it to come back to me as the, you know, chairman of Google or whatever. They're like, oh, yeah, like he uh, was actually Google's GPT, taught him how to do this whole thing and plan the whole op. You're like, like. When an event that bad happens, it doesn't matter how you agreed. Like, well, actually, legally, you can't do these things. So it's just like Google. It's just information. You're on the fucking hook. And even if you're not legally on the hook, your stock price is going down hard. I mean, everyone's stock's going to go down if Charlotte, North Carolina gets fucking nuked. It's just bad for everyone. And because the companies have some associa uh, association with it, it's not – like, if you come up – to a, a police officer and you're like, uh, sir, I'm like, uh, how do I commit a crime that you guys will have a real hard time catching me with? They'd be like, dude, get the, what the, get the fuck out of here, kid. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you that. Yeah, I, I would know as a cop how like to minimize my chance of getting caught, but like, I'm not just going to go tell people that. So I think it's totally cool, totally fine if they don't just don't, don't just tell you everything. And uh, if there are people that publish GPTs that do tell you everything, I have no problem with, with government authorities going after those people and being like, hey, we're, we're going to track everyone that receives certain kinds of instructions digitally, and we're going to monitor them. And you can tell people anything you want. We're going to know exactly who you're telling and when. And they're going to be like, well, it's not my fault. Be like, no, totally. It's that person's fault. And we're going to know what kind of information is crossing streams. Does anyone that gets instructions, I'll put, put it another way, I'm totally cool with the NSA or the CIA, whatever the fuck NSA, finding out everybody who is downloading how to make a nuclear weapon instructions off the fucking internet or talking to a GPT about it. I want the NSA to know that shit. I know Snowden, blah, blah, blah. I totally hear that. There's tons of nuance. You don't want federal agencies to become too powerful. But I, uh, I, uh, that's a problem. Federal agencies powerful is a problem. Nuclear weapon detonation in American cities? I'm not good with that, man. So I'm cool with law enforcement having a fucking role there. Hey, you, they're not going to like – they don't care what other shit you, you, you try to ask a GPT. If you're asking a GPT how to kill a ton of people, I want the authorities to know that you're asking that. So at the very worst, they could ping you and be like, well, why do you want to know this? Oh, a school project. That's sweet. We're going to continue to monitor every single part of your electronic communication and your movement around society. But uh, have fun. Enjoy. No, you're going to set off any alarms. But if you're actually building a nuclear weapon with a GPT, I think society, the rest of society should know about it. I want to know about it. Next. Some shit should probably be gated, uh, kind of like a click here if you want a very uncool reality. And when you click the check mark, you agree to the terms of service and understanding that like you're going to hear some shit that, that like we didn't make this up. We trained a model to read the internet as objectively as possible. And it's going to tell you some gnarly shit. Don't blame us. And by the way, you probably shouldn't click on this because it's going to piss you off. That kind of gating is super cool. And I think OpenAI, uh, Sam Altman has talked about this sort of thing. Like, you're going to get the experience from a GPT that you want. So if you want a GPT that talks to your kid, you're going to be like, hey, kid mode. And GPT is like, got it, no problem. Uh, 
Otherwise, it's like super adult mode. Is like it just tells you real shit. Um, you know, things like how your looks affect your high school experience. If you're 12, the GPT might be like, ah, here, kid, here's some good life advice, right? Maybe we have different GPTs that give you different degrees of insight. And you want a certain degree of insight, you go for it. I think a very good thing that is pretty much inevitable is that when GPTs are trying to give you the truth, you're going to go and realize some of them lie to you more than others. There is going to be a huge competition in GPTs to give you more and more of the truth. And that's the biggest reason I support Elon's truth GPT is if only it is, its function is as a competitor to OpenAI and to, and to Google to saying, hey, some of the stuff they're saying, like if Google gives me an answer I don't like, I'm going to be like, ah, well, I love their interface. It's definitely better than Elon Musk's GPT. Let me go and see what Elon's shit says. And it says something real different. And that thing it says that's real different, it's like, yeah, that actually makes a lot more sense with the rest of the stuff I know about the world. So, like, imagine if if they they really got super PC. It's unlikely that I mean, maybe. Uh, and like, you know, Chat GPT. If you're like, hey, are men more violent than women? You're like, well, it's important to understand the sociocultural context, and statistically, that's not really true. Blah blah blah. All right. And you ask the reality GPT, and it's like, yes, here's how. But here's some nuances. That's not always like with everything, but generally, yes. You know, think back to your life. If you're anything over 15 or 20 years old, you're going to be like. Oh, yeah, I think the reality one's correct. And then that creates a ton of competitive pressure for various uh, competitors like OpenAI's model and Google's model. Because at the end of the day, you're like, okay, um, I have a marketing task in my job that I want a GPT to help me with. I want to market to the fucking real world. I'm going to go with Elon's shit. And it might not be as powerful and it might not be as a good of a user interface, but I'm at least going to cross-check it. And that makes Elon a crap load of money every time you click on the thing. And it makes Google's people and, and OpenAI's people go, God damn it, we're losing share to this thing because we're just lying to people. Like, could we like do less lying? Can we at least have a version of our GPT that's the truth GPT and we can do the regular front-facing version for everyone to not offend people? But then if they pay us $20 a month, they get to, you know, you have the thing if, if you use a GPT. Uh, if you use uh, OpenAI's uh, chat GPT, there's like 3.5 and then there's four. And there could be another one that's like truth. And you're like, okay, if I click on that one, it's real deal time. Like that might be a thing because again, the truth is insanely valuable. And if just one competitor offers a further step into the truth away from PC bullshit, it's going to attract a lot of attention, a lot of money and put a lot of competitive pressure. And thus over time, it's probably going to lead most things to go closer and closer to the truth, which is a great thing. Point number three, some stuff we may choose, and by we, I mean most of us, just to not talk about much or in public until we've gotten it fixed or are well on our way. So for example, race differences in intelligence, they are real. Some of it is very enlightening. Some of it is some shit you don't ever want to see. I don't talk about it because I don't. I'm not willing to stake my entire livelihood on the shit and get canceled. But also, even if there was like, hey, look, look, no one's getting canceled. New law, no one's allowed to cancel you. Uh, I probably still wouldn't talk about it much because it's gnarly. And outside of some specific policy discussions, uh, it'll be much easier to talk about once genomics matures and we can genetically engineer everyone to have a higher intelligence and thus everyone can just be smarter and smarter all the time, then we can look back on it five years later and be like, oh, like we used to all be of like a, a different intelligence level based on our, our our group membership. And it wasn't that fun, but now it doesn't matter. So it's kind of like, it might be okay to not just talk about stuff, right? Um, which maybe GPTs just tell you instead of you just ask about it and it lies. So if you say, hey, tell me about race differences in intelligence, I would totally respect a GPT that was like, hey man, some gnarly shit. Here's the option to see it. Here's the option not to see it. Or I would even have more respect for a GPT that was like, hey, I'm not getting any of this. Like bombs and shit. I'm not gonna teach you how to make a bomb. I'm sure shit not gonna talk about race differences in intelligence. I'd respect the fuck out of that. I'd be like, oh, this is dope. And you go to Wikipedia, you go to a bunch of other sources, you go read actual books and you find out if you really want. 
I respect that a whole lot more than it just being like, well, actually, no, there are no race differences in intelligence room. Oh, cool. Uh, that's not true. And it's not the fact that that not true is a big problem. Who gives a shit? It's like an esoteric concept that applies to almost nothing in the real world because you don't need to know someone's race. You just need to know their direct ability and they either got the job or don't go to school or don't, whatever. But from the perspective of like believing uh, an entity, if it straight up lies to you, what else is it lying to you about? And because most GPTs are leftist biased, yeah, they lie to you in other leftist ways. And then you just don't know what to make of it and you just kind of tune out. Bad dude, bad news. I would much rather say, like, look, I just don't talk about this for obvious reasons. And if you don't understand those reasons, wait, sweet, you're an incel, you're on Reddit. I love it. Just kidding, sort of. And you just go find your own way. But at least they'd be honest about saying, hey, I'm not going to talk about this. Almost all the other stuff. Last point. I think we should be open about truth and reality as much as we can. Because two things, the truth cannot hide for long. It always gets revealed in the end or almost always. And as we mature as a society, as a huge team, we're all on the same team, right? The enemy is entropy. Survival is the winning trophy. Death is the losing trophy. There is no second place. We're all on the same team as a global society. And as we mature together, we need to grow up to facing more and more of the truth together. So outside of these sensitive topics, which we could just drake them for a bit and be like, you know, I'm, let's leave that where it lies. Let's not lie about it, but also let's not talk about it. I think that's dope. But after a while, as soon as problems like become fixable, for example, upgrading everyone's intelligence, we can start to be more open about what's really going on. Anyway, that's all I got for today, folks. See you guys next time.